Hey and welcome back to a new video. About one and a half years ago, we were checking out AMD Ryzen 30 by 7000 CPUs. And now, almost a year after the desktop 9000 launch, we're also getting the Threadripper 9000. And also very similar from the desktop change from 7000 to 9000, there's not a huge change in Threadripper. So for example, the core count in general is still the same, but we're getting the change to Zen 5 architecture, which means that in general, just more efficient cores and also higher performance. All the details we will check out in today's video. You need serious power for demanding workloads? Then check out Hetzner, one of Germany's largest internet service providers. With its own data centers, high performance servers and storage solutions, Hetzner provides the digital foundation for projects of every size. They also have VPS options with dedicated vCPUs that are perfect for massive data processing, machine learning, gaming servers, websites and high workload applications for super low prices. With the code devour 15 new customers can even save $15 or 15 euros. Find out more in the link in the description below. Already last week, AMD announced the 30 Pro CPUs. Those are the ones with the WX suffix. And very similar to the previous generation, the ones with WX suffix are the ones that support octa-channel memory configuration and also have more PCIe lanes. But apart from that, the general core count is the same between the normal 30 with X suffix and WX. The only difference there is that the biggest CPU, the 9995 WX with 96 cores only comes as 30 per Pro. And the biggest CPU as a normal HEDT 30 per is the 9980X with only 64 cores. So these AMD 30 by 9000 CPUs that we're looking at today, the non-pro come with X suffix, max 64 cores, AT PCIe 5.0 lanes and the well-known STR5 socket. AMD did not change the TDP configuration going from Ryzen 30 by 7000, so it's all still the same. All CPUs are listed with a TDP of 350 watts, even the big one like the 9980X. In this table, it's quite nice and easy to digest what this means for all those different CPUs with different core counts. For example, if you look at the 9995WX, which has 96 cores, but still a TDP of 350 watts. That means if you fully load it, it will stay at a base clock of 2.5 gigahertz. Whereas if you were looking at the 9945WX, which comes with 12 cores, the clock will stay at least at 4.7 gigahertz. That's just because different core configuration, but all of them have the same TDP. You might ask yourself the question, what is this CPU even for? Like who is buying this? And it's kind of closing the gap between the desktop CPUs, like normal Ryzen up to 16 cores, but lacking most of the time PCIe lanes for like professional workstations. For example, if you want to use, I don't know, three or four GPUs and you need the full bandwidth, then you would have to go for this platform. And that's possible even if you don't need the core count. That's why there is like a 30 bar with only 12 cores, but then you have the full bandwidth of all the PCIe lanes. Another thing might be the memory configuration. In this case, it's a TRX50 platform, so the tiny 30 bar, the 9970X with 32 cores, and it comes with quad channel memory configuration, and it's using RDIMM memory, which might be important for your workstation application. And another thing is surely also the officially supported memory speed. So I got those modules from G-Skill, are the modules and these are 6400 C32 because previously Ryzen 30 per 7000 was supporting up to 5200 mega transfers and now AMD increased it to 6400 mega transfers and most of the time I wouldn't care so much about it but I think especially on a workstation the officially supported memory speed definitely counts and I think the step from 5200 to 6400 is definitely a significant increase. For the bigger 30 per Pro CPUs like this 9975WX, you also need a different motherboard. This would be WRX90 that then offers the octa-channel memory configuration and also more PCIe lanes. As you can see, I have still both here or already both here, but this will be a different video. But we will first check out the 9970X 32-core CPU on the TRX50 motherboard. One thing that is still crazy is how long it takes to boot. I already shot the German take. It took like two minutes to talk about it. Now there is still no display signal and it's still doing this A0 thing, which is, it's normal. This is expected for this platform and that's something you have to be aware of. Otherwise you might think something is broken or bugged. You just have to be extremely patient. Especially the first boot takes like five minutes. And it's, you know, it's, it's cycling through some postcodes and then you have to wait. 
you have to wait for minutes, even though it's it's showing you like DRAM detection. It's it's not like something is broken. It's just it's just AMD and uh, yeah, the Threadripper platform. And on WX and on WRX90, it's even worse. You have to wait like forever. And for me, the craziest part was getting the BIOS update. So I put the BIOS on the USB drive and then I went into BIOS, which took like five minutes for the first time. And then you, you like verify the file, then it reboots. You have to wait another, like, I don't know, three minutes. Then it's telling you, oh, it's secure boot. I have to reboot again. You wait another couple of minutes. Then it's flashing the BIOS. Then it's rebooting. Oh, look, it only took like six or seven minutes. Oof, yeah. Just be patient. And talking about just being patient, it's the same thing opening ZPUZ. Already did a German take, but it takes like a minute. It's because of reading all of the SPD. There is an easy trick to bypass this. Just open the file location of ZPUZ and then you change in a config file the SPD from one to zero. Then it stops reading this and yeah, saves you a lot of time. In the end, the impressive thing is the multi-threading performance. That's why we're straight going to Cinebench R23 and also checking the package power at the same time so the CPU sticks to the TDP of 350 watt, never exceeds it. And you will be able to see, even with hardware info open, I mean, we have enough threads to cover the background load of hardware info with this CPU. It's like 75,000 points all the time. And what I personally find absolutely impressive is the thermal management. This is only a 360 AIO. And the CPU most of the time, as you can see here, it stays at like 60 degrees Celsius, peak 70. And yeah, that's, that's absolutely amazing. I think for, for what a CPU is, for how many cores it has, for how many threads and how this is handling, what kind of performance you're getting. And with 350 watts getting like 70 degrees Celsius, it's absolutely impressive. One more thing I wanted to check is the behavior of this setup in terms of VRM thermals of the motherboard. Because looking at this, yeah, it's, it's a three-part heatsink. Definitely has some surface area, but just subjectively, it didn't seem to be a lot of surface area. I added a thermal couple on here. There is not really direct airflow. There is the AIO in the back, but apart from that, there is no fan blowing air directly on it which would probably be the case if you would mount this inside some sort of workstation or system and checking the temperature of the heatsink after about one hour of constant load we are approaching about 70 degrees celsius and that is perfectly in line with, with what we see here that uh, the actual vrm temperature then is closing in on to about 80 degrees celsius which is considering that it has been running for one hour with like constant load that is an okay temperature and especially as I said in a system with airflow should definitely be fine. I'm personally planning to use AMD 30 by 9000 in Project Irrationality 2.0 and that's why I'm absolutely interested to see how universal you can use this CPU outside of the, you know, the workstation application. It is a workstation but I think it's also very universal. And if you go back to like the first AMD generation Threadripper, like the, the 1950X, that was a rather problematic CPU for gaming, but that's a long time ago and I think a lot of things changed. And that's why we want to check out the 9970X, 32 core in gaming. In Cyberpunk 1080p with max settings and an RTX 5090, we can clearly see a difference to the recent desktop CPUs. For example, the 9950X 3D beats the 3970X by about 15 to 20% and is also consuming 10% less power than the 3 -tiber. I think this is mainly caused by the missing 3D V cache. In Counter-Strike 2, the difference is even bigger. We're looking at 198 1% low FPS, which is about 45% slower than the 9950X 3D. The difference in the average FPS is not so big with only 15%, but you can clearly feel the big difference in the 1% lows. And in addition, the 9970X also consumes quite a bit more power with 162 watts. Very similar difference in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, where the 9970X 30 bar is much worse than the desktop CPUs and also consumes more power. We see about 40% difference in performance between the workstation CPU and a recent X3D CPU. And at this point, you might be thinking, ah, that doesn't look that great if you're thinking about using this for gaming. 
similar as I'm planning to use it. But apparently there are also games that profit from the higher amount of cores. For example, as I had it with Star Wars Outlaws in 1080p. I could see a slight decrease in the average FPS, but the more important 1% lows were, for whatever reason, better using the AMD Threadripper. And even looking at a power consumption with only 123 watts, this is even in the desktop area. The thing is though, I'm quite confident that if you're running a Threadripper platform that costs several thousands of dollars, then it's quite likely that you also have a strong GPU alongside, so like a RTX 5090, which also means that you will probably run higher resolutions, such as 4K. And if we're doing exactly this in Cyberpunk with now 4K, we cannot see any kind of difference between the CPUs. Well, there is a tiny difference, but I think you can't feel it. So it doesn't really matter if you would play this with a 285K or 9800X 3D. I'm pretty sure in this scenario, you will not be able to tell a difference subjectively. The only difference you will be able to see is the power consumption with 166 watts. This is definitely higher for the 9970X Threadripper. So I think as long as you're running a higher resolution, then I'm pretty sure this is a very universal platform. Like you have very high core count, you have high amount of PCIe lanes, and even for gaming, as long as you're running like a high-end GPU with high resolution and more in the GPU bottleneck, then this is probably the most universal platform that you can currently use. Now I also want to check out the 64 core, so the 9980X. But for this, I will change from AIO to custom water cooling simply because I also want to try like PBO and maybe some manual overclocking and I think with like 64 cores and if you unlock the TDP, you will quickly run into the thermal limitation of a 360 AIO. So that's why we just switched to custom water cooling. I also heard that ideally you don't drop the CPU into the socket. That would be beneficial. The CPU is in the socket, the cooler on top, and I will now connect this to my Mora that is under the table. So that's basically triple 360 radiators should be enough. Now with the 64 core, I think this should be interesting, especially considering how cold it was already with AIO. And it's the same TDP as the 32 core. Yeah, holy shit, this is... It's not even 50 degrees Celsius with custom water cooling and you're getting 115,000 points. I mean, it's, it's still peaking at the, the 350 watts, but I mean, it's 350 watts and not even 50 degrees. I mean, if you would compare this with like 14th gen Intel, there was the, like the, you know, the surface of the sun at 350 watts and this is like, like really cold. Also means that we have some headroom to play with. So I think we will just go to BIOS and just unlock PBO and see what happens if there is no power limit to the 64 core. Can somebody tell me what exactly Gigabyte was doing with this design? Like, I mean, it, it already annoyed me updating the BIOS. And I mean, what is this? It's like, it's like white on gray, like with different gray tones. And then this like teal, it's so difficult to see. It's, I think it's not as difficult to see on a camera, but in real life, this is not really pleasant. That will be interesting because I didn't do anything aside from unlocking PBO, which takes 20 seconds to do. And I think the power consumption will be the most interesting 400, yeah, well, 630 watts. And it's incredibly fast, 136,000 points. And even at this state with custom water cooling, this is an okay temperature we're seeing not even 80 degrees Celsius. This is definitely something you could run daily if you can live with the power consumption of over 600 watts. Clock seems to be 4.7 gigahertz across all of the cores once they are loaded. And with this, we're taking a look at more multi-threading benchmarks and workstation benchmarks. In the Cinebench R23, the 9980X 30 bar is about three times as fast as the 9950X 3D, while not even consuming twice as much power. So just looking at efficiency, the 30 bar 9000 is absolutely incredible. And 116,000 points at 350 watts, that is certainly impressive. Another example for the good efficiency is the 3 d Mark CPU Profile Max Threads test, where the 9980X is about twice as fast as the 9950X 3D while consuming the same amount of power. But with only 173 watts under load, you can clearly see that not all of the cores of the 9980X are being used. Still, the CPU is very efficient. 
This is a challenge for a lot of applications. For example, also here, Adobe Premiere, just rendering one of my 4K YouTube videos that they just can't use as many cores. That's why you can't see any difference between the 9970X and 9980X. So they're basically in the same kind of speed. They're fast, but then if you're looking at the desktop CPUs, it wouldn't make a lot of sense if you're then also looking at a power draw. I think overall for just this specific application, a 285K or 9950X 3D would have been the better choice. Loading the audio tracks into Premiere is typically also CPU limited. And here we can see a bigger gain using a 30 per CPU. However, same kind of thing, that the difference between the 64 core and 32 core is basically not existing. Still, 30 per CPUs will take, like in this example, 12 seconds, whereas the 9950X 3D would take 19 seconds. Unfortunately, I can't deliver this fully professional workstation review. I just reviewed the CPU in the environment where I'm going to use it or where I would use it. And I think it's amazing how universal you can use this CPU with just as many cores as you need, up to 64 on the like small HEDT, with a huge amount of possible PCIe lanes so I can hook up all kind of SSDs and expansion cards that I want, while definitely being able to play games and then obviously rendering applications will benefit from the huge amount of cores. And one thing I didn't have in the charts so far, but if we do a direct comparison between uh, 30 by 7,000, 32 cores and uh, 30 by 9,000 and 32 cores, I had a performance gain of 17% at the same power draw which I think is quite impressive. Another impressive thing is the unlocking potential that you have if you have sufficient amount of cooling and if you neglect a higher power draw. But if you want to, within minutes, you can just open up PBO and you get a lot of extra performance. Now the thing is I wanted to do or add more manual overclocking into this video, but honestly, the platform can also be quite painful, especially if you run overclocking out of the BIOS the way I did it, and then things crash and you have to wait another five minutes for the next boot, like the boot times on this platform is, is painful. So if you run this as a workstation, just, just never shut it down and I think it will be fine. But apart from that, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of performance, can be annoying with the boot time, but overall I think uh, 30 by 9000 is quite impressive and I definitely enjoyed this. Hope you also enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye-bye.